Now his hair did grow back. His hair got way better. But I wonder if the quality of his muscles suffered because he decided to block five alpha reductase. What is up everyone? It's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907 wire.com coupon code Russo. ASMR Spritz Intelligent Elephant H2O. Here are your noises. All other discounts and codes to save you money and support my unbiased content in the description below. Check out my source list. All right, today I have a very controversial topic and I'm talking about finasteride and dutasteride, the best hair loss drug in the entire world, no question. So I've watched Ian Valier, who's a famous Canadian bodybuilder who dates Melissa Bumstead, the you know definition of Canadian bodybuilding royalty, one of the best physiques ever, in my opinion, a true mass monster, an OG mass monster with very dense, crazy muscle who has been on the Olympia stage in the top 10 for a very long time. He has recently decided to retire, and I noticed that it was around the time he started adding in finasteride. So I'm going to have Andrew showcase his physique through the years. And then I believe within the past two years is when he added in the finasteride. When I was younger and read into finasteride, which I'm not as well versed now I am not as well versed as I was back then, but I thought that finasteride couldn't really impact overall muscle mass. And as someone who is suffering from post finasteride syndrome, it does. It does in a way of it's like muscle quality and fullness from the neurosteroid cascades being lower than they would by reducing 5AR, right? Everyone's focused on DHT, the androgen, where that's where I would be focused too. But as suffering, I've noticed that again, I have tons of tissue. I weigh 251 in the morning fasted, right? And when I get pumped up, but it doesn't have that freaky bubbly look because my allopregnanolone is still too low. So I'm wondering if Ian never took finasteride, if it would have extended his career, because think about Ian, I'm 251, pretty decently chubby. This guy's like four times the size of me, IFBB pro monster, one of the hardest workers in the gym period, and one of the most dedicated bodybuilders ever to come out of Canada. Think of the amount of androgen receptors he has built up in all his skeletal tissue. And then think of the central nervous system demand for neurosteroids as he adds in something that destroys 5-alpha reductase, which causes all those neurosteroids. My thing is like, did he take the finasteride in and out? Did it improve the quality of his muscle? Or is he just at the end of his career? Now, I don't want this video to even like impact his decision to retire. I don't feel like he has anything to prove and his physique is absolutely bonkers. And if he wants to move on and do other things because bodybuilding consumes so much time, I'm all for that. I'm just wondering, did this stupid finasteride like ruin the quality of his muscle? Because you see like towards the end, he still has shit tons of muscle, like still has tons of muscle. And it's just like his stage weight is good. He's very competitive. It looks flat. It looks like the muscle is not there as it was in his earlier career. So I wonder if that finasteride impacted his overall bubbliness and his neurosteroid level to hold the extreme amount of skeletal tissue he has. I don't think finasteride would really impact a FFMI of under 25 of a natural person. I don't really think you would notice too much of a difference in side effects, but I think when you're dealing with a you know, high performance bodybuilder, AKA an extreme amount of skeletal tissue, which yields an extreme amount of 5AR expression needed to have the neurosteroids to feed this muscle. There's an argument there and it would be a real bummer if Ian's career was ruined over a hair loss pill. Now his hair did grow back. His hair got way better, but I wonder if the quality of his muscle suffered because he 
decided to block 5-alpha reductase. I don't think he had any actual side effects from finasteride other than maybe, you know, this muscle quality, right? Because he's still replacing the androgen. He still could have used DHTs in the contest and he still could have saturated his body fully as far as AR is concerned. But the neurosteroid cascades, there's not really a lot of things as I've researched in for the past couple of months to try and deal with that. And I wouldn't think this unless I haven't suffered from it already and notice the extreme amount from having super low allopragnanolone. Allopragnanolone will definitely drop when finasteride is introduced, but I have super low. So like if I take a bunch of PEA and I crank mine up, I get fuller, I get denser, I get harder, my striations come out. And then as I deplete myself because I have this mutation that causes me not to maintain a high level, I get stringy, my muscles are still there, but I can't flex them as good. And it overall deteriorates my physique as the day goes on. I'm wondering if maybe it dropped his aloe by like what, 10 to 40%. And then he still had muscle, still had strength, but that, you know, freakiness, that quality isn't there. And that's what he's being judged on at such an elite level. What do you think? Am I full of shit just bashing finasteride into oblivion? Or is there some truth to be told about neurosteroid cascades? I will see you guys in my next video.